um, among many other films that were submitted to the Freedom and Unity contest for, uh, for, for teenage filmmaking. And the Middlebury New Filmmakers Festival is always happy to, to, to highlight these films as part of our series. I'm Jay Craven. I'm the artistic director of the Middlebury New Filmmakers Festival. So why don't you first just introduce yourself, um, talk about what it was that inspired you to make the film, and that'll be the first thing we do. So at the end, this is our uh, art therapy. Well, my name is Andrew Martell, and obviously I've made art therapy. Um, art has been a huge inspiration in my life, and you know when I heard about the Freedom Unity Contest that you get to express you know, different passions you have, different interests and stuff like that, I decided, you know what, I'm going to tell my story a bit, you know, and I can kind of convey my story through my art because I used art to kind of fall back on when all else fails. So I felt, you know, I wanted to share that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it was the contest itself that made you decide to make the movie? Yes. Uh, I was, I'll be honest, I, I heard there was money, so I was like, all right, mom, def definitely got to hone in on this one. So I put a lot of work into it. Um, I took so many, so many shots that I didn't use. Yeah. But I, I, I think I had about four or five different versions of that video before I got okay. to the one that's up there. So. Did you get any money? Uh, yeah, I got like a hundred bucks. Okay. Pretty much. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Good for you. Okay, then we have the brown water, what's the name of it? The water ran brown. The water ran brown, about the copper mine. Okay, tell, tell us what inspired you to make this film. Uh, so my name is Ezra McGinley Smith and I made The Water Ran Brown, uh, the story about the Elizabeth Mine. And I'd always been kind of interested in the mine itself because it has a very interesting backstory. And um, I also love filmmaking, photography. And so I decided to kind of go up there and check it out and I was like, well, this would actually like make a pretty cool film. So um, I decided to make a film on that because it was kind of talking about, I was really interested in the history of it. And uh, yeah, so I met, met some cool people who knew a lot of things about the mine. And um, I mean, it's, it's really beautiful up there. So it was definitely a fun experience to make. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the, the photography of the, of the streams and all of it, very, very beautiful. Thank you. And the emotional power of your film, uh, Art Therapy, very strong. And it really gives you the, the case of working through, we're using art to work your way through emotional complication. Thanks. Very effective. All right, now we've got a whole cavalcade of filmmakers here. All right, why don't you each introduce yourself first and then we'll go back and talk about what made you, what you got to make the film. Um. My name is Stella Gray. I played <coughs> I played Elena, one of the girls from the past in The Lost Epidemic. Okay. Um, my name is Oprea. I played um, one of the people in the modern classroom. Okay. Um, my name is Elizabeth. I was B in the movie. Okay, you were B. Yeah. All right. One of the old. One of the older people, one of the old-fashioned people. Uh, I'm Avery, I was Kira, one of the time travelers. Okay. Um, I'm Willow, and I was one of the modern-day classmates. I'm um, Lila, and I was one of the like time travelers, I guess. Okay. So what inspired you to make this film? Um, we saw the similarities between the 1918 pandemic and now, and we decided it would be good. We saw the film festival and we decided it would be cool to make a film about that. Amy, you want to tell more? Oh, um, okay. Well, uh, uh, what? Okay, well, Kurt <laughs> sent us um, the uh, contest and we thought it would be really cool to make something because we've been making films. You've been making films? Yeah. The six of you? Yes. Okay. More than <laughs> um, uh, well, yeah, and so then I thought it would be cool to make something for it, and we knew it would have to fit into one of the categories, and so we thought history would be cool, and then we, um, yeah. We so you came up with the idea. How did you come up with the idea? 
You came up with the idea of the 1918 pandemic, first of all, as something from history, yes? Yeah. So then there's another idea that comes into play, which is what? Uh, huh? The pandemic now. Yeah. So the pandemic now, and then the idea of time traveling, yeah? Yeah, it was mostly we just thought about, we had thought about time traveling first, but then we weren't sure what we would do and when we would go back to the I don't really remember how it came up exactly. So you came up with the idea of a time traveling movie, but you didn't know exactly where you wanted to travel. Yeah. All right. And so then who came up with the idea of the pandemic as, as a place to travel? How did you get there? I think it was either you. Was it you? I think it was me. Yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. This is what you call working it out, right? And then did you write a script? Uh, yeah, you know, the script wrote the whole script. Uh, a lot of scripts. And then, okay, <laughs> um, and then people, we had, we had people come up with their characters first, and then uh, we wrote the script, and we, and if they wanted to change the line, we let them do that. Uh-huh, okay. Now, did you have an adult work with you on the script, or you just did it yourselves? No, we Okay, and then so the filming, how did you work that out? Everyone filmed except me because I'm very bad at it. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have a camera that we use and um, we were thinking about good places to film. Um, we organized a time and date to film at the Shelburne Museum in, Ver in Shelburne, Vermont for a more historically accurate setting. As you can see, Very the nice. majority of the buildings are made of wood and look more older because when they were made, most of the majority of them were made between um, 1850 and 18 and 1900. Okay, and so, so how did you convince the Shelburne Museum? Who called them? Um, I called them. We we originally asked them around February, yeah, I um, but we couldn't. Yeah, we couldn't figure out a date that worked for all of us, and we ended up planning for a date and then having it not work out with the museum. So I called to see what available dates there were and then worked from there, so that we could work for for them. Okay. Because they're a business, whereas we, as a group of then seventh graders, were a little bit more flexible. And fifty. Okay, and you shot one day at the Shelburne Museum? Yeah, we couldn't work out more than one date to film, and since, and the, um, we were about an hour away from the Shelburne Museum, so we didn't want to film there for multiple days, so right. we all got in our costumes and filmed, um, for about three hours, we cut a lot of scenes. Uh-huh, um, okay. And then also we filmed... Yeah, we filmed in a lot of places. Uh, we started with the first scene where they're in this modern time. We filmed in one place, but then the audio was really bad, so we had to refilm the waterfall. And then we tried another place, but it started to rain. It started to rain. Okay. Outside. You guys know what making a movie's about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, so what town are you from? We're all from Middlebury, Vermont. Okay. All right. So you go to the school right here in town? Yes. Which school? Well, I'm transferring school. Um, everyone other than o uh, Oprea Littlefield right here is going to Middlebury Union Middle School. Down okay. The road. Good for you. So, how long did it take to shoot art therapy? Uh, From the time you started to work on it to the time it was done. I, I think why it was somewhat like uh, let's say March we started. Uh, that's when I was notified about the competition by my teacher, and I worked on it pretty much to the day of submission, like April, uh, around April, okay. sometime, like in the beginning of April. Did you know right away what you wanted to do this, as a film? Uh, I kind of, uh, whenever I'm introduced to a topic, I kind of already think of ways I'm going to do this. So I kind of had a general idea the day I started, like, yeah, like okay. Um, you know, I'm thinking, just 
practical stuff. I'll get some time lapses in there of me drawing, which surprisingly enough that, you know, five second clip took about two hours yeah. with the time right. lapse of yeah. just me drawing. And yeah. The funny part is I cut out most of it. Um, <laughs> so it, 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 took a, it took a little while. Um, you know, I interviewed my dad and uh, I had to pull off some footage off of YouTube for that clip in the beginning. Yeah. And I actually, it took me a lot longer than it should have because I mismatched the audio with the, like the lip syncing. I, I messed that completely up. So I had to go back, I had to scrap all the editing I just did, go back, find the clips, and do it all over again. So I actually ended up taking it twice as long. So it, it took about like a full month I was working on it every day. Ezra, how about you? How long did it take you to make your film? Um, I would say, well, I started filming in, in like the winter and I kind of laid off the filming and I did a little bit more in the spring and that's when I did most of my editing. So I, I um, it took a couple months, but like it wasn't really like every day or I like I took a couple of weeks where I just didn't do much and then I went back to it. So it was, it was a little bit on and off. It's hard to say like how much exactly, but um, once I had all the footage, it, footage um, I don't really know how long it took to edit, but I had a, I had multiple versions of the video, and I kind of went back and changed it. Okay. Yeah. You have a next project in mind? Um, I'm making a couple videos, but no uh, no really big projects in mind right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And how about you all? Do you have another movie you're gonna make? Yes. Yes. What is it? Uh, well, the name is Overnight Escape right now. Overnight Escape. It's probably going to change it. Um, it's about uh, girls who get trapped. Girls who get trapped in the library. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Because you had to film in a library. Yeah. yeah. Um, we we do something called the Youth Media Lab, or we did in sixth grade, um, where we had a film club at the library, and we filmed our own individual movies with equipment provided by Oldley Library by Kurt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who, who, um, now wait, who are you you're crediting now? Who, who? Right here. All right, fine, <laughs> good. Um, so we ended up filming a lot of library themed movies because that was the setting that we had to film in. Yeah. Our, our first movie, um, Jasmine's, was about uh, three sisters. Who three sisters, okay. You got the cast. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you're not actually sisters. No. Yeah. Okay, fine. That's movies, and that's the other thing about movies. It's all fake. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. Okay. Except for when Twilight. Yeah. Well, the idea of making a dramatic film is a big challenge, and we give you guys a lot of credit for doing that. You know, because you got story, you got script, you got collaboration, you got production, you need acting, you need. Now, who was the director? Who directed the performances? Um, these two were the co-directors. <laughs> I yeah. I, I was mostly the director, but Elizabeth helped a lot. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. <laughs> and how did you figure out what you what you needed to do as a director? Um, I don't know. I had to. Yeah, to figure out where to yeah, put the I camera and what to tell to, the actors. Um, yeah, keep them from going crazy. Yeah, because we do that sometimes. I sometimes say the odds, the job of a director is to create conditions where everybody can do good work. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to think about. It was really hard when we were filming at Shelburne Museum because it was really cold that day. Oh, and, uh, and no one was really in a good mood. There you go. <laughs> and so it's the director's job to keep everybody doing the right thing even though everybody's in a bad mood. Yeah. I know all about that. <laughs> okay. Any questions from the audience? Yes, here. Just quickly, I want to congratulate all of you. Um, and I, I have a couple questions and, and a couple comments. I just want to say how important it is, maybe if I dare I say documentaries, um, and telling your story in art therapy was very, very touching. And I just wanted to say thank you for sharing that. Um, and I wanted to comment also on The Brown River, which was a beautifully shot film, and really looking forward to seeing what you're going to do next. <laughs> and wanted to say to all of you that your outtakes were so appreciated. And I would definitely look into some comedy, because that was really, really, really good. But for all of you, I'm really curious as to what aspect of filming was the most joyous for you. Who wants to start? 
start at the end. All right. Um, well, that's the most joyous part. I don't know. For me, the most joyous part, like all the parts were pretty difficult to do. So I'm, I'm a very narrow minded person when it comes to when I'm working. So I don't really think in terms of like fun or, you know, stressful. Actually, well, I think it's stressful sometimes, but I, I'll say like the, the most fun part was putting it all together. Well, that was also the most stressful part. But once I got to see it, you know, play out, I, I, you know, I went through hours of footage. And once I got to see all that be put together with all the B-roll footage, all the interviews, all the audio finally working, that was, that was, that's probably the best part. It's just seeing it all put together and seeing that vision be realized. That's, that's definitely the best part. Um, for me, I'd say probably the most fun part was uh, just getting like the, the nature shots because I do a lot of photography and so kind of like line up the shot like a photo and then you do video and add, find a way to add movement. Uh, and then the interviews were, you know, meh, they weren't too fun, but like they, they were an important part. So um, but, uh, I'd say like the B-roll nature shots were the most fun part for me and editing. I like editing. B-roll was fun. Yeah. What was the most joyous part? Oh, um, I, this movie, um, okay. uh, this movie, um, I think, um, I don't know, I think planning it. Was planning it. Really fun, because like, uh, like writing and script and stuff, I really like doing that. Um, usually I really like filming, but, um, it was not that fun. You usually really like filming. It wasn't that much fun this time. Mm -hmm. But it looked like you guys were having a blast despite everything. Ultimately, when you look back on it, it was a lot of fun, right? Everyone except the three. Yes. We'd mess up the scene and we'd all be laughing and she'd be like, guys! Well, yeah, because we had to do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. We spent three hours filming that, um, what is it, 11 minute film? Nine. Nine minute film. Um, <laughs> That's pretty uh, it good. He was more than three hours. Way more than three hours. Last night, we showed Raiders of the Lost Ark, and the actress Karen Allen was here, and she spent, said she spent three weeks in a, in a dungeon-like environment with mummies and all kinds of strange stuff. Three weeks of filming with dust and cobwebs and heat, and it only ended up being about 40 seconds on the screen. <laughs> so, you know, that's the way it goes, right? But you guys like working with each other, I think. Yes? You're a team. All right, any other questions? Yes? Um, will anyone think about uh, the contest next year? Think they'll join the contest again next year? I think we will, though. Yeah, I don't know. And this was, I don't really like making movies, but I thought it would be yeah. We'll make a comedy. Make a comedy. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I might be a little bit the opposite from Avery because I really love making historically things historically accurate. I did the outfit research for this movie, so um, we have really deal. historically accurate outfits. I did. I spent about nine hours researching. Um, different accessories, the shirts and skirts and different kinds of dresses and the shoes that women wore and the hairstyles. I have about six Google Docs and they each have about 12 paragraphs wow. in them, complete with paragraphs just on information that I wrote down so that I wouldn't forget it, all spent to make um, mine and Elizabeth's outfits. So I really, I really enjoy researching yeah. things. Great. I thought those costumes were fabulous. Hers is more historically accurate than mine. Is that right? Okay. Well, no, there's a lot of work that goes into it. That's a dramatic film, requires all these different elements. You were thinking about the world that you were occupying, which was the world of the Shelburne Museum, creating that sense of the right time and place, talking about costumes, talking about script, talking about directing, talking about acting, a lot of different elements go into it. You deserve a lot of credit. It's a very ambitious film. Okay, so congratulations, absolutely. 
and absolutely to you guys as well. You won these awards, you have, um, you know, as a result of playing in this film festival, you're actually eligible for a production grant down the line for a dramatic film. Uh, it's competitive, but uh, you should keep tuned in with what we're doing. Because we give two $10,000 production grants every year to filmmakers. Uh, but anyway, thank you to the audience for being here with us, and thank you to these fabulous young people.